The purpose of this presentation is to provide you with an overview of the series of steps in a decision-making process towards selecting an intervention. Foundational to the process of selecting appropriate interventions is an understanding of the data-driven decision-making processes found within the intervention framework. This framework guides our decision-making when supporting students with diverse learning needs. It reminds us that we need to consider our own school culture, our families and our students when making decisions about best practice in selecting interventions. The response to intervention and universal design for learning methodologies, which underpin the intervention framework, also guide us in making flexible decisions to support students who require additional support or intervention. Our evidence-based approach to intervention gives primacy to high-quality instruction so that all students can succeed. High-quality instruction is the hallmark of the response to intervention methodology underpinning the intervention framework. At Tier 1, you'll be supporting students with high-quality differentiated teaching and making adjustments for your students. The decision-making process required to determine the most appropriate intervention beyond this level begins at Tier 2 and moves into Tier 3. This process supports students who have not yet re reached expected levels of performance or those who have exceeded those expectations after receiving high-quality Tier 1 instruction. The frequency and intensity of support increases as the student moves between the tiers. The tiers are not discrete and separate, but rather are fluid in design. Support at these levels is supplementary to core instruction at the universal T1 level. Decision making at the school must ensure that the best matched intervention with the required intensity and frequency of support is offered to ensure progress for all identified students. Data driven decision making articulated through the intervention process, supports all educators in this work. It begins with the identification of students, then more targeted assessment where required, and an analysis of the data and evidence collected to build a comprehensive student profile. After a student profile is established by working through the first three components, your attention is directed to the adjustments and interventions that will best support the next stage in learning for any student. The focus of this presentation sits in both the learning and teaching and the evaluation components. A guide to selecting an, an intervention is a CEM publication that can be found on Kevin. It will give you more detailed information about the process and help you with a com comprehensive checklist that's, that you can use to work through when you're investigating an in intervention. The hexagon di discussion analysis tool can also be used to help identify if an intervention or practice being considered fits within the context of your school. Both of those documents clearly articulate that selecting an intervention is not a one-size-fits-all approach. Schools need a suite of interventions that they can draw upon to support student learning, depending entirely on the data and evidence that's been collected, so that the intervention matches the student learning requirement. The following elements and processes help simplify the complex task of determining the most appropriate intervention match for any student or cohort of students. You will investigate the intervention and determine whether it is research-based or evidence-informed. You will determine who will be best placed to oversee and deliver the program. You will examine for evidence that the instructional delivery includes key elements of instruction that are known to be effective. You will need to develop an understanding of the school resources that will be required to implement the intervention with fidelity. This means delivering the intervention as it was originally designed. And most importantly, you will determine whether the intervention that you are investigating matches the instructional requirements of your target student or cohort. There are a few guiding questions and prompts designed to support your decision-making process that we will look at a little more closely. 
When considering an intervention, these are some critical questions to guide your investigation. Generally, we talk about two acceptable standards for intervention. They should be either research validated or evidence informed. The most important aspect to understand in a research validated program is that the program itself has been researched. It has appeared in a high quality journal and it has been peer reviewed by experts in the field. An evidence informed program or practice has individual characteristics that are known to be effective. For example, high quality reading programs will include a phonological awareness component as this skill has been researched as being effective. But the reading program as a whole may not have been researched. The role of the educator, whether that be a teacher or a learning support officer leading the intervention is critically important. Be guided by these questions. Consider these two documents for further research and information about who is the most appropriate educator to be supporting student learning. It is recommended that the instructional delivery of any intervention should include these features. Regardless of how effective an intervention has been described, the school needs to consider these questions to determine whether you have the necessary resources to be able to deliver the program as it was designed. Now we come to the most important question. Is there evidence that the intervention you have investigated is a suitable match for the specific learning requirements of your student or cohort of students. In order to research the validity of an intervention, there are a number of search tools and websites to which you can refer. These search tools will provide you with descriptions of intervention programs, reviews, costs, effect sizes, as well as the overall effectiveness of the intervention for a particular cohort of students. What we've focused on so far reflects each component of the intervention process in some way. The component of learning and teaching reflects your decision in choosing the most appropriate intervention to match the requirements of your student, gathered and analysed in the first three components. The evaluation component is integral to understanding the impact of your chosen intervention on student learning. Evaluation has to be planned at the start of any intervention. It's not an added feature once students have completed a period of instruction. Remembering that this step is about evaluating student progress in response to the intervention and evaluating the implementation itself. It is critical to plan the collection of objective data before the intervention begins and equally at the end of the intervention. Plan too for how you'll monitor student progress throughout the intervention. It's important to monitor whether they have had sufficient time and support to learn a new skill or gain the knowledge. This progressive monitoring will help determine if the pace and intensity of the intervention is meeting the student's learning requirements. Most importantly, you will need to consider how you will partner with parents throughout the intervention process. This partnering began with your program support group meeting where the student's learning was discussed and goals for learning were set. You will have multiple ways of keeping families informed throughout the intervention. In all of this, you are not alone. Consider the opportunities for partnering with your school teams, with our diocesan community in the Learning Exchange and with CEOB for further professional development and learning modules so that together we can ensure in learning for all our students. <laughs>